grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon is based on the healing of the deaf mute, the lesson just read. You will see that the sinner often feels closed out, closed off by life in this world, but that the gospel reveals how everything you encounter is part of God's perfect cure. Again from the miracle. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Apotha, that is, be opened. So far the text, let us pray. Lord Jesus, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. If you were the deaf mute in our lesson today, if a man you had never met before did to you what Jesus does to him, stick a finger in your ear, spit toward you, tap your tongue, groan in your face, you might think it a bizarre experience, to say the least. Insulting, demeaning. But I offer for your consideration today, this wasn't all that out of the ordinary an experience, not for the deaf man it wasn't. No, he's been through all this before. And by this point, his encounter with Jesus, he's sadly grown accustomed to such treatment. You see, from the earliest days, his parents first suspected there was something wrong with their little boy. All this odd behavior began. The awkward claps about their child's head trying to get a reaction out of him. Peering into his ears down his throat to look and see what could be wrong. Neighbors offered to help, repeating the same nonsense. And all the medical professionals of Jesus' time could do was poke and prod themselves shove a finger in his ear, yank on his tongue, all to end up with the profound diagnosis, your son can't talk. This Jesus' encounter with the deaf mute happens in the region of Decapolis. Decapolis is a Greek word, decathlon plus metropolis, a region of ten Greek cities riddled with pagan healers who had all sorts of quack advice, interpretations, and treatments, which oddly enough included something Jesus uses, uh, spit. Human saliva was a common medicine among them. Attempt at medicine, that is. At least, though, these family friends, these doctors, were trying to help. Neighborhood bullies weren't. Bullies who taunted him with no good intent, stuck their fingers in his ears for fun, or boxed them in with their hands from behind as a cruel joke. Sighing in front of him in mimicry of the only crude sounds he could make, teased well into adulthood by grown bullies who would mouth right before his face and jest, Epatha, why don't you talk? Now this deaf man, closed off from the world about him alone and alienated, accustomed to bullying, the Son of God does the same things, puts his fingers into his ears, spits, touches his tongue, sighs and says, Apatha, why don't you talk? You don't have to be deaf to have been treated this way. To be poked and prodded by doctors with no real answer, 
one follow-up appointment after another, one procedure after the next, all to end up with no better diagnosis than, yep, yeah, it still doesn't work. We might not have the pagan healers of the Decapolis running about the Dakotas, but quack cures and condescending advice still abound, from self-help home remedies to the cliches and mottos of people who find meaning in life without church, none of which can prevent death. And of course, there are bullies today who prove opportunistic regardless your particular weakness, boxing in and taking advantage of your kindness, your naivete, your humility, your patience. Those who you know mock you, even if they don't do it in front of your face. All the experiences of the deaf mute, bounced about back and forth by factors in life out of your control, Pain and disappointment you wish you could vocalize but can't. Loneliness when no one seems to be able to hear what you're trying to say. The disorienting, confusing encounters you can't understand yourself. All of which leave the heart to wonder, to doubt if the biggest bully of all might not be our God. if he weren't the one somehow, someway, playing with, toying with you. Which brings us back to the odd behavior in our gospel lesson. Jesus tapping the deaf man's tongue, finger in the ear, moaning, sighing before his eyes, enunciating with such emphasis he could feel the spittle on his face. The difference, though, being this. Jesus' epitha. Jesus' open up. Why don't you just talk? It works. He does. And with this miracle, at this moment, all the odd behavior from Jesus, all the cruel treatment that deaf man's whole life through, becomes transformed by the Savior's gracious work from bullying into blessing. The difference our words, our actions, they tear one another down, close one another out. But Jesus' word has the power to heal, the power to give life. And all that deaf man did was watch Jesus do it, take it all in, and receive blessing upon blessing. So to the crowd, those he had grown up with, who had gone through all the same motions Jesus did, only with no result other than hurting him more, closing him out farther from the world, they're changed as well. No longer bullying him out of boredom, their quack advice silenced, they bless in return. This Jesus, he hath done all things well. It was love and mercy the deaf man took in with his eyes for the healing of his ears. Love and mercy we take in today with our ears for the healing of the soul. For though they had seen the wonder of Jesus heal a deaf man, the greatest miracle was yet to come. When the one who said, let there be light, and there was, when the eternal word made flesh, Jesus would fall silent, become mute himself. The good news that God not only knows your every cruel experience from some 
high, exalted, all-knowing throne, he came to know it, to experience it himself. That you and I might watch with our ears a Redeemer suffer what we do. Watch Jesus suffer what you never will, and thereby turn all your bullying into blessing too. Through a mockery of a trial, when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and elders of many false accusations and tales, browbeaten, intimidated, cast to the ground, spit upon and slapped, talk, why don't you? A sight so shameful, Pilate couldn't help but wonder, answerest thou nothing? Jesus yet answered, not a word. Led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. Closed off by those who heckled him on, he cried in deepest despair, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As the doctors of the law and those caught up in the crowd poked and prodded at a man with no ailments, offering him one maltreatment after the next with no better diagnosis than He's not that great after all, is he? He was. Because in all those groans and sighs at the hands of those deaf to the wonder before their eyes was the love of God on perfect display. Dear friends, the scriptures admit the feeling is real. The experience of being bounced about by life with no good explanation, you're not making it up. But the fault is not God's. The scriptures teach that the reason we feel so bullied and ignored is our broken relationship with him on account of our sin. A diagnosis with only one treatment, with only one cure, for the righteous Son of God to be offered up in our place and make atonement for our spiritual disease in order to heal you in full. You see, of the few times he did speak in his suffering and death, seven brief words, seven crystal clear utterances, Jesus only broke his silence so you'd know he did it all for you. And believe that after the ultimate quiet, Jesus' mouth shut, his lips closed in death, his body sealed in the tomb. That he rose again in victory to prove how all that bullying he had endured secured eternal blessings for you. This, your eternal redemption, is a story which cannot remain silent, as sure as that grave could not remain shut. As the Easter angel's first words, he is risen, he is not here, opened the mouths of women to repeat the same. You, you go your way and tell. Jesus himself giving commission Whosoever sins you remit, they are admitted unto them. Preach the gospel, teach all nations. Such that we who have received the good news of reconciliation with our Creator by Jesus' precious blood might say with the crowd who beheld that deaf man speak, This Jesus, he hath done all things well. That's faith. The ability to look past what you have to go through and trust God has not left you. That he couldn't be closer to you than he is through the righteousness now yours in Christ our Lord. A miracle which can only be worked in your heart by this gospel word. You see, spiritually speaking, we are the deaf and dumb, incapable of vocalizing our true problem. 
The human heart can only make up cruel stories of a god distant and aloof, or listen to supposed life experts as deaf and dumb as we. As the quack advice of this world closes you off farther away from the Creator, who wants nothing but to draw you eternally near. Eternally near to Him, here and now through the forgiveness of sins, and on the final day, when he who said, let there be light, and there was, when he who said, be opened, and it was, will say to your body, arise, and it will. Eyes and ears healed in full, knees and hips, mind and heart, that final day, working at last as God first intended, as originally designed, and more. So if you found yourself poked in pride, whether you've been bullied or been the bully. For every poor treatment in this life, find it all in Christ's cross and empty tomb, eternally transformed. Yes, God does seem silent when you're looking for him anywhere other than his word. Try to figure him and his ways out on your own. How could you not feel bounced about? In the gospel, though, you find a God who neither abandons nor teases, but beckons and urges you on to look at Jesus. In him find true healing. And the end, a heavenly goal, where all question and doubt will be silenced. Indeed. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.